Good morning, and welcome to the historic cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those we welcome those of you joining us through live stream. Of course, there's nobody present except for the celebrants in the building. Um, we pray that you are in good health. Our presider today is, Father, is Archbishop Hunt, and our gathering hymn is number 490 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Like a Shepherd, number 490. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today's <coughs> gospel, we have the beautiful parable of the prodigal son. It's a parable that speaks to us of the great mercy and love of God for each of us and invites us to join in that love, both in ways when we are prodigal, in terms of returning, and in terms of uh, when we are with him truly sharing in his joy and the love that he has for each of us. That we may worthily enter into this celebration, we pause to call to mind God's great love and to ask forgiveness for the times that we have failed to share that love with one another and with him. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven, guide us, we pray, through this present life, and bring us to that light in which you dwell, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Micah prayed to the Lord in these words, 
Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. As in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, show us marvelous things. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in showing clemency. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and unswerving loyalty to Abraham, as you have sworn to our ancestors from the days of old. The word of the Lord. Psalm refrain is, the Lord is merciful and gracious. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King. 
King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I will rise and go to my Father and tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to jesus and the pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them so jesus told them this parable there was a man who had two sons the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. And he would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a magnificent parable. So many messages to share with us about God and his love, his compassion, his mercy, but also about the invitation that he gives to each one of us. God invites us to be part of his family. Through baptism, we become his sons and daughters. And so he invites us to share in his mercy and compassion, not only in terms of his willingness to forgive us when we're like the younger son, when we wander away from him, but also in his desire to be one with us as he wishes to be with both of his sons. In some ways, though the, young, the elder son has been with him all along, in some ways that elder son is as far away or maybe further away from him than the younger son. That elder son has failed to accept the invitation of the father to be one with him and to see the world and to see his brother with that same love and compassion that the father has. This parable invites you and I not only to celebrate the great mercy and compassion of our Heavenly Father, but it invites us to an examination of conscience. It invites us, when we see ourselves as terrible sinners, to recognize that God is always waiting for us, always willing to welcome us back. And at other times, it invites us to reflect on whether in some way we may be like the elder son. Do we look with compassion upon the sinners in our midst? Are we happy when they return to the Lord? Do we do our part to be open to them and merciful to them? And do we, on a day-to-day -day basis, truly accept the invitation of the Father to be one with him? to rejoice with him in his goodness and in his compassion and love. In the Mass, we celebrate how great God's love is for us. And in celebrating the Mass and in receiving the Eucharist, whether in person or spiritually, as we have to do at this point because of the pandemic, we are invited to become one with the Lord and to open ourselves to have that compassionate, merciful heart that we see in God and which he wishes to share with all his people. God bless you. Opening ourselves to the love and kindness of our God, let us bring our prayers and petitions to him for those who are in need. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders, that they may be open to God's compassion and may be channels of that compassion and mercy in their leadership of our world and its people. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have fallen into sin or weakness or frailty and who feel themselves unlovable and unredeemable. We pray for them, that they may open themselves to God's love and that they may feel and recognize his great care and kindness for each of them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who at times are self-righteous and are very much focused on their own goodness and look with disdain on those who they see as less good. We pray for them that they may hear the words of the Father to the elder son and open themselves to that kindness and love that God wishes each of us to share and to use in our dealings with others. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith, 
that we may hear ringing in our ears often the words of the Father in today's gospel, that all he has is ours, and he invites us to share in that mercy and love. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through these sacred gifts, we pray, O Lord, may our redemption yield its fruit, restraining us from unruly desires and leading us onward to the gifts of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the Saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Through baptism we are God's children, and so we have the confidence to pray as Jesus our brother taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Communion hymn is number 6.6 in Celebrate in Song, One Love Released, number 6.6.
Let us pray. May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, fill the inner depths of our heart, and by its working mightily within us, make us partakers of its grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary. You always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the ears of your mercy be open, O Lord, to the prayers of those who call upon you, and that you may grant what they desire, have them ask for what is pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 480 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Amazing Grace, number 480. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet. 